Um, exactly. Well, folks, it is great to be back. We are on, I think we're on session number 11 now. So we have actually last uh, next week is the last one. But uh, for those that haven't attended any of these, my name is Dan Walleen. I'm with our cloud advocacy group. And we've been talking about over the last 10 sessions, uh, different ways to take your line of business apps to the next level. And uh, the three main pillars, which we're going to see in a moment, are generally AI, uh, communications, and then organizational data. And we're now in the organizational data aspect. So we're going to talk today about retrieving files, chats, and even uh, sending messages into Teams. So with that, if you haven't joined any of the other sessions, um, all of these have been recorded. So we did around five on Azure OpenAI and how we can do uh, prompts and all that fun stuff to actually help your users be more productive and more creative. I'll show you an example of that really quickly. Uh, we talked about how we can make even phone calls directly from the app or send SMS or email messages using Azure communication services. And then now we're here. We're in the bring organizational data into your apps, which I'll be honest, uh, I ran a consulting company for 20 years, and this wasn't an area we focused on, and I regret it. Um, we should have done a lot more in this area because it's a huge opportunity to take your apps to the next level by avoiding all those context shifts that you know we do and our, our users do. So we'll talk about uh, files and chats today, and then uh, next week, we'll get into, to wrap up, emails and calendar events. So for those that haven't uh, seen this and those that have, my apologies, because you've seen it like 10 times if you come every week. And if you do, more power to you because you're learning more. But uh, real quick overview. So this has, again, AI communication and organizational data features. Uh, as an example, I can chat against my own data. So this would be an example of using Azure OpenAI and uh, what the artist formerly known as Cognitive Search, it's now Azure AI Search. Um, but here's an example of that where I have some documents and then we're just using OpenAI models to actually talk to those documents, if you will, to find what's in those documents. Um, we also have communication features. So we could make calls. This would actually call me right now. That's not my number, but it's hard coded temporarily. Uh, or we could send email messages, but we could actually uh, do those using uh, AI if we needed to. So an example I showed is, uh, you know, order is delayed a certain number of days or whatever you want. And then this would go out to Azure OpenAI and actually uh, generate email and SMS messages. And then you can use ACS, Azure Communication Services, to send those. Okay, so that's kind of what we've covered in the past. Now, the last couple sessions, we talked about organizational data. So we talked about how we could use uh, MGT, Microsoft Graph Toolkit, to log a user in and out. We talked about Microsoft Intra ID, how to set that up and register your app. Um, but now what we're going to talk about is some of the files and the Teams chats. Now, you'll notice this one has a couple files. So what did that, you know, did I write all that? What happened here? Well, originally, yes, I did write all this about, uh, well, it would have been beginning of the year about that is when I started putting this together. But if we were to right click on this and inspect, go to the developer tools, um, let me scroll up here a little bit. Let's, let's make that a little bigger for you. There we go. Uh, you'll notice shadow root right here. Okay, now that's a pretty good indicator that eh, we might have a web component. But let's go up a little bit more, and there we go. Notice app files up here, and then I have some other stuff that I did. Well, right below app files is MGT search results. Now, if you haven't used this one yet, it's pretty amazing if you're making Microsoft Graph calls. Now, I'll show you the code because it's very simple here in a moment, but I didn't do any of this. Now, I could certainly override the template. I'm kind of zoomed in super big here, so it's wrapping a little bit weird, but I could totally take over control of this if I needed to. Um, but I kind of liked what they output, to be honest. Let me go to a different company here. Let's go to Tailwind Traders, because I know they have not only uh, files, but also some Teams chats. Okay, so here's an example of an Excel spreadsheet now this time and a Word doc. And then, of course, the user can click on that 
but it was a minimal amount of code to make this happen once the user's logged in, of course. Now, the other thing is this right here. Notice I can actually go to these chats. Now, I'm not going to open up Teams here. I could actually log into my tenant and show you. But what I want to show you is that, again, we can output the, in this case, title of the chats. And then we could actually view those. And if I was, I don't want to tempt fate here because I think it's going to open my regular Teams. But um, we could actually view that message. Now, you'll also notice I can send a message into Teams. All right, pretty cool there. So I could say, you know, Tailwind Traders order has been closed or whatever. And then when I send it, that's actually going to use Microsoft Graph to send into a Teams channel, in this case, a fake kind of sales channel that I have. So lots of opportunity here to help the user stay right where they're at and not have to jump out to other areas and, you know, although this isn't anything to do with Copilot, this is also a benefit I think that the Copilot options that are coming out bring to the table is you just do what you need to do in the app you're already working in, and then they can go get the data for you so you don't have to switch context so much. Beautiful thing. All right. So to do this, what would be the process? Well, the first thing I want to show you is actually right here. And uh, we looked at this last week for those that were here. We talked about the login control. So there's an MGT login. And to get started with these, you literally just install a Microsoft MGT package. It's super, super easy to get started. And because these are web components, That's they're going to work in. I'm hearing somebody there in the background. There we go. Um, What's really nice about these is that means because they're web components, you could use them in a React app, a Vue app, an Angular app. Um, they're, they're web components. They work pretty much anywhere the web works, which is really, really nice. Now, we looked at this one last time, and that's actually what's driving right here. Okay, but there's a new one. There's actually two new ones down here. MTT search box, which I'm not going to go into, but it does kind of what it, you'd think. It provides a search box. But the one I'm going to show is this one, search results. And what I'm going to do is kind of compare and contrast. Here's what I would have done if I would have written all the code using just typical Microsoft Graph API calls. Here's what I'd do if I use MD MGT search results. And, well, I'm kind of giving it away because this is what I did right here. And you can see that it's very similar to what you saw uh, in the demo app down here. Really, really nice if you haven't played with it yet. So let me jump on over to the code kind of for the rest of this. And what I want to do is jump into a graph service TS file. Now, this is just a client side file that makes some graph calls. But I want to jump down to the search files. You'll see that right here. Now, what the search files does is not super advanced or anything like that. I set up what I want to do. So I want to query for drive items. So this is OneDrive for business query. And then the type of query I want to do is going to be whatever the user typed, followed by and content type document. I only want documents um, out of this. So I set up this little object literal. I called it filter. And then we call into the graph client. Okay, and you'll see that call right here. I'm calling search slash query, and I'm posting that filter object. Now, not too bad, right? I mean, it's just a little bit of code. But I'll show you how this gets cleaned up and We'll dive in some other examples next week as well. Now, from there, though, I do need to go through and extract out what I want. Now, there's multiple ways you could handle this. I tend to go with the most easy way when I'm there's a tutorial around this. So I try to stick with something pretty standard. But you'll notice I'm going in to find all the hits. And then I just push those into a custom array I called files. OK, now that is how things started. That was like before. Now let's look at after. So let me come on down into a files component. And that is after. All right, pretty nice. Now there's the MGT search results web component from the Microsoft Graph Toolkit. Uh, I have a custom class on it. Notice I only want the entity types drive item. Well, that should ring a bell because what we just cover here, entity types, drive item. I just don't have to write the code now, which is really, really nice. Uh, what is the query 
And by query string, we mean what's the query? Okay, so it's some search text, but query string is the property. Uh, if you're not familiar with the square brackets, don't worry about that. That's an angular thing, but I'm data binding uh, to this search text. And then when things change, when we start getting data in things, I might want to know. So I could actually have a callback function. In this case, I called it data change. Now, I'm not doing much with that one at this point, but next week I'll show you how we can completely override the templates by handling this. And it's actually really, really clean and a great way to do it. But we'll talk about that. I got to have some reason for you to listen next week, right? Okay, so that's pretty cool, right? Now, when it comes to this though, all right, if we go back and we run this one and you'll see I have some Teams chats here. Now that one, yeah, um, there are some things you could do there with MGT search results, but I did need to customize that one. So for this one, if we jump on down here, you'll see search chat messages. Now, this starts out very, very similar. Um, entity type chat message, okay. And then query is just whatever the user typed. And then I'm going to say uh, what I want to grab, how many I want to grab here. Now, that looks pretty similar to what you would do even with searching files. You'll notice I then call the graph client API. I call the same exact search query, and I post it. So everything up to this point is kind of identical. Where this gets a little tricky, though, is I need to extract out some data such as the team ID, channel ID, message ID summary, because I wanna get very specific information out. So notice I'm gonna push that into a chat IDs, and then I'm gonna retrieve uh, the actual messages themselves. Okay, and you'll notice I'm gonna go get the message and call the get function. Now, there's a lot of code I'm throwing at you. This is all be in the tutorial, so if you're interested, you can check this out. Now, for this one, using the MGT search results wasn't quite as feasible, just because I need to trick it out a little bit. I need to customize it. Uh, so in this case, yeah, it's just using code. And then what I end up with is messages. And you'll see those right here. So I get you know the ID, the team ID, the channel, the summary, all these fun things. That's actually what's showing up right here. And again, there's always different approaches you can take with this. This is just one uh, that I'm showing you. But what I wanted to highlight here is that just be, if you've never used the MGT search uh, results before, just because you're using that and going down that road, of course, doesn't mean you can't just hop out of that and do your own thing. There are some cases where, yeah, it's not going to cover exactly what you want, so you do your own thing. No big deal. All right. Now, the last thing I want to uh, show you here is the send. So recall that I can actually come in and I could say new and then, you know, type some message here. There's my favorite. Anyone else do test data like this? That's my favorite test data right there. And then I could send that into a channel and it does work here. Um, to do that's actually pretty straightforward. You know, we can use again a graph call. We could give it the team ID and the channel ID. So notice I'm going into some team ID channels channel ID messages. Now imagine that you had like a sales channel and maybe it has uh, a, like a sales team with a channel called sales, let's say. And now you wanna send into that directly from any app. Well, we can do that, of course. So first off, I have the URL here. I have the body of what I wanna send. I'm gonna send HTML. Uh, content is the message the user would have typed. And then we use this graph client again to go ahead and post that up to this API in Microsoft Graph. And then I get response and I can go ahead and uh, return that. And that's all I had to do to enable this type of functionality. Um, not super involved. In fact, it's what, from 159 to 178. So I don't know, 20-ish lines of code, something like that. But that's what we could do to actually handle uh, sending into Teams. And you may say, I don't really need this, Dan. And that may be, that may be. What I'm gonna offer though is take some time to sit back and analyze what are some things we could do to just get that data we know we ha already have out there in our organization and bring it directly into the app so that the user doesn't have to switch context. Now, that could be some of this AI stuff I showed. It could be the organizational data. I mean, there's lots of scenarios. 
I think we get so focused as developers. Oh, I'm going to kind of go on my soapbox here um, on, you know, that, well, I got to make the API calls and the database and the graph calls and that, you know, whatever it is you're doing that I kind of wonder sometimes when's the last time we took a step back and said, hey, if I'm the end user, what would I find really useful? What would be super productive, make me more efficient, all those things. So with that, I hope that gives you an idea about what you can do with the MGT search results as well as you can always jump out to uh, graph calls, of course. So if you are interested, I'll give you a scan code here in a moment, but this is where we are right there in the tutorial. This will walk you through everything I just did. Um, I do wanna give you one little bonus thing that just we announced at Ignite. So if you are interested in uh, the adopt, extend, and building of co-pilots, we have a new doc and I'll show you a link here where you can get to that. So uh, the scan code here will get you to the tutorial again. This bottom one, aka.ms Microsoft Copilots, and I'll put this in the chat for you. Um, this will get you to some brand new Copilot documentation. I know Waldex coming up, uh, he contributed to quite a bit of that, uh, especially the sample. So with that, I'm like a minute over, so sorry, Vesa, but let's go ahead and uh, turn it back over to you. Mm -hmm.